Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be discussing 10 terrifying real life exorcism stories. Latoya moved out of the house and now lives many miles away. She knows her story is hard to believe. For this video, we'll be revealing the stories behind 10 alleged exorcisms that possessed real life consequences. What are your thoughts on the right of exorcism? What's your favorite exorcism themed movie? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. George Lukens. Vintage tales of exorcism, like any very old story or folktale, can become difficult to verify. The case of George Lukens can be traced back to the mid-1700s with newspapers like the Bristol Gazette describing Lukens as the Yatun Demoniac. Lukens lived in the UK's Somerset County and was, by all accounts, a well-liked and God-fearing man. Yet villagers in Somerset's Yatun Township also described George Lukens as prone to loud and fearful fits. Attention from local doctors did not help, and the tailor eventually fell under the care of Methodist clergymen. The priests prayed over Lukens during a violent and boisterous exorcism. The end results were a success, and Lukens was quoted as saying, Blessed Jesus, upon emerging from his trance. Christy Bamu What took place in the Christy Bamu case is a leap to something utterly feral. Not every exorcism or attempted exorcism is always performed with good intentions. The case of Christy Bamu is an unfortunate example of this, a tragic and senseless murder that took place back in 2010. This wasn't a dramatized exorcism sequence like the ones often found in the movies. Instead, Bamu was killed by his brother, Magali Bamu, and another East Londoner named Eric Bakubi. They were forced to pray and take part in what was a sadistic ritual that was under the guise of deliverance. Christy was held down in a tub against his will on Christmas Day, the victim of a botched exorcism attempt that resulted in the teenager's death by drowning. Hundreds of people turned up to the funeral. The family are very popular in this community, and yet they became engulfed in such horror, brought about by rituals and a culture they had long left behind and rejected. Sister Marikika Kornici. The harrowing story of Sister Marikika Kornici was known by another name the Tanaku exorcism. It took place at a Romanian parish in 2005 with conflicting reports describing whether Sister Marikika Kornici was mentally ill or possessed by demons. The exorcism rite, by all accounts, was fairly extreme and consisted of Kornici being bound, gagged, and affixed to a cross. Father Daniel Corajona and his assistants kept Kornici in the church for three days, after which the sister's health deteriorated to the point where an ambulance was needed. An autopsy report described Kornici as dehydrated and exhausted, while coroner Dan Gorgiu asserted that it was the excessive administration of adrenaline in the ambulance that eventually led to Marikika's death. The Ammons family. Did you at one point believe this house was the portal to hell? There was a portal. It's interesting to note that stories of exorcism don't always take place decades in the past. In fact, there are a number of intriguing tales that have occurred relatively recently. The Ammons Haunting is one such tale, an alleged case of demonic possession that occurred in Gary, Indiana back in 2011. The Ammons family reported a variety of incidents that they surmised were supernatural in nature. These included hearing voices and noises and feeling as if they were being physically accosted by unknown forces. Me, 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 me. The incidents troubled the Ammons so much that three exorcisms were performed, although skeptics have countered that the entire idea of demonic attacks on the family was either imagined or a hoax. Some people claim that you made this all up, that this was some sort of an elaborate hoax. Is this a hoax? No. Gottlieben Dittus. The Lutheran theologian Johann Blumhardt espoused to a Kingdom Now form of religious thought, one that focused on actively promoting God's teachings on Earth. To this end, Bloomhart publicized the exorcism of a young girl named Gottlieben Dittus in a book that was published back in 1850. The tale of Bloomhart's battle galvanized his clergy who believed that Johann had triumphed over not only devils that were dwelling within Gottlieben, but other spirits as well. Specifically, Bloomhart claimed that a murderous widow who had committed infanticide also lurked within Gottlieben's soul, and it was the power of Jesus that allowed victory during this rite of exorcism. What about the baby? I got it under control. But it's gonna burn. Michael Taylor. The story of Michael Taylor didn't end with his exorcism back in 1974. However, attending clergymen from the Catholic, Anglican, and Methodist faiths claimed to have cast out at least 40 demons from a violent and disturbed Taylor. The all-night ceremony wasn't completely successful, however, and the holy men claimed that Taylor was still a dwelling place for demons. Later at home, Taylor murdered his wife Christine in an absolutely brutal fashion. He was found to be insane at the time of the murder by a court and spent a combined four years at Broadmoor Hospital and Bradford Regional Medical Center before being released. Darling, light of my life, I'm not 
gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. Clara Sila. Did Clara Herman Asila make a deal with the devil? Some say yes, asserting that the teenage satanic pact resulted in Clara opening her soul up to the demonic invasion. What dost thou want? What canst thou give? Sila allegedly divulged this information into a priest during a confession, while nuns at Clara's South African church claimed to witness strange behavior from the young girl. Speaking in tongues and acting out in a violent manner only seemed to scratch the surface of Clara's dark behavior. Accounts allege that the exorcism rite took place in 1906 and possessed all of the expected dramatic moments. <laughs> Levitation, spitting, and a physical assault against one of the priests were attributed to the possessed Clara. Although the young girl did allegedly emerge from the ordeal demon free. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! Annalisa Mika. How many exorcisms should it take before one should say enough is enough? One, ten, how about 67? This was how many exorcisms were attempted on Annalisa Mikau, only a year prior to the young woman's death in 1976. The West German woman suffered from legitimate issues such as epilepsy and depression, issues that became worse during the time leading up to her exorcisms. Mikau's parents were actually convicted of negligent homicide thanks to their enabling of Mikau's lack of food and nutrition during this time. Annalisa's very real death due to dehydration and malnourishment stood in stark contrast to her alleged demonic possession, a possession that was later retracted by church authorities. Anna Eklund Does an exorcism only need to last a single night? Not if you're Anna Eklund. This young woman's name was actually Emma Schmidt, and the story of her exorcism was one of the most well-documented of the day. Time magazine even discussed her multi-month exorcism, although actual details of Schmidt's early life in the late 1800s are fuzzy and debated at best. It's thought that Anna slash Emma began to show signs of acting out as a young teenager, potentially in reaction to a troubled home life. An initial exorcism in 1912 would be followed by more viscerally violent rites in 1928. These rites reportedly resulted in physical changes and reactions from Eklund slash Schmidt, including a dramatic weight loss due to a lack of eating. <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Roland Doe The name Roland Doe, like that of Anna Eklund, was a pseudonym, intended to protect the identity of its young victim. The young boy was said to have been possessed by demons and underwent multiple exorcisms by Catholic clergymen during the 1940s. <laughs> the story of Doe's alleged possession and claims of paranormal activity have been heavily debated, with investigators denying that anything supernatural took place. Still, stories of the physically violent Doe exorcism would go on to inspire the most famous fictional example of the rite. William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. Ow! 